Hi, welcome to another edition of North Shore Journal. I'm your host, Walt Kosmowski, and I'd like to introduce uh, my guests uh, today. First, I have on my right here a good friend and frequent visitor to BevCam, John Archer. John, welcome. Thank you. Nice <laughs> to be here, truly. And, and with the John is uh, Tom Smoker. That's right. Hi. Yeah, T-H-O-M, Tom. That's Tom me. Smoker. Right. <laughs> And uh, the reason that we have uh, these two gentlemen in the studio <clears throat> is that they are going to be starring in a musical production uh, this coming Sunday at the Larcom Theater. And it's going to be called Broadway Comes to the Larcom. And uh, I will tell you this again, but it's going to be Sunday, this coming Sunday at 3 p.m. at the Larcom, and tickets are still available. And... Um, John, let me, let me start with you. Um, I, I know you and I have talked. Uh, you've been a frequent guest here. We've talked many times in the past. And you, you aside from your, your career as, a, uh, as an insurance guy, who everybody knows, and your, your, your frequent travels around the world, uh, you are a thespian and a singer, correct? Correct. Correct. And I know that you've, um, uh, you've had a lot of memorable roles, especially at the, at the Marblehead Little, Marblehead Little Theater. Little Theater. Yes. Uh -huh. uh, tell us about some of those roles. You were, and you were, you were Henry Higgins, right? I, we did our big production of My Fair Lady, and I was lucky to get the part of Henry, yes. Henry Higgins. Yes. And um, we did... Um, Sound of Music. Sound of Music. I was Captain Von Trapp. Von Trapp, yeah. yeah. We did um, Annie. I was Daddy Warbucks. Yeah. Um, Goes on for got, got 30 to. years. Wizard of Oz, I was the Tin Man. All right. Oh, wow. And um, did, you know, a lot of, lot of shows with MLT. Yeah. And they do, they do nice theater. We just did um, Arsenic and Old Lace. And I had a small part. I played Mr. Witherspoon. And I get kicked off, uh, poisoned. Early on. No, I'm nope. the last one. Oh, you're well, the last actually, one? you're not even too sure if they... Do me in the sisters. Oh, okay. The elderly sisters with arsenic. You know, we did that at our, at our high, school high school play it's so many years ago. I've, I've, yeah, we did it's a arsenic. great play for um, high schools to do because mm -hmm. there's so many parts. Mm -hmm. And there's so many good parts and a lot of character parts. It's sort of like um, Guys and Dolls is a great show for high school because there's many, many parts in Guys and Dolls. Yeah. yeah. Uh, now, now, John, let me ask you, uh, when, when did the, this bug bite you? Were, you? were you like, did you perform in high school oh, yes. productions and things like that? Tell us a little bit yeah, about that. Well, even before high school, but I went to St. John's Prep, yeah. and we did plays. Um, the first play I was in at the prep was The Life and Death of Sneaky Fitch. And you're looking at Sneaky, Sneaky? Fitch. Okay. Sneaky Fitch. I was a sophomore, and I got the lead in the senior high play. Wow. I was not popular. <laughs> I have to tell you. But um, I like to sing and dance, and, you know, I was outgoing and could do it. So we did Camelot there. Yeah. And I was King Arthur and Guys and Dolls, and I was Sky Math. And just, you know, I was in a lot of plays there. Yeah. So. And uh, uh, now, you, you told me last time um, that, um, uh, well, we, we were talking about the last show we were doing, Kathy, who was here, the the opera Kathy singer, Lamy. Kathy Lamy, and uh, she had uh, she had a little bit of an accent. Was she going to be in this production? She uh, was going to be in this production. We've talked about it, and um, unfortunately, Kathy had a stroke uh, in the spring, leaving her fine. Absolutely no residual anything. She's yeah. good, but her doc, um, and she was disappointed in looking forward to the music that we we've been talking about it. Yeah. And, um, but her doctor hadn't regulated her blood pressure and didn't want it to yeah. really do anything. Didn't mm -hmm. want it to leave and get on a plane. And, you know, this is a bit stressful, the show. Yeah. Um, yeah. but, uh, Kathy's a pro and, um, uh, even last year we did it a couple times at Glen Magna. Yeah. Uh, and then we did it at the Larkham Theater. And right. We only had a couple rehearsals. You know, yeah. she's a... Yeah, I was at the Larkham when you did it Yeah, when we did it. Yeah, yeah, and it was a big success. Yeah, it, was, it, was a, it was a crowded house. It was yeah, a full, we had 250 mm. people. Full house at the, at the Larkham, yeah. <coughs> well, John, let me, let me just uh, uh, talk to the gentleman on your right, Tom Smoker. And uh, 
Tom, um, your your involvement here. You're you're a pianist, yes. right, and a musical music arranger. So tell us about your role in in this uh, in this production. Well, this fall, well, just a couple, well, maybe like a month ago, John and Tom um, reached out to me about wondering if I would be interested in helping them with the rehearsal process and accompanying them and then if I would be interested in accompanying during the show and I was absolutely interested in doing it. Loved working with these guys. I got to work with John this summer in a Gershwin Porter review oh, wow. where our music directed at Marblehead Little Theater and John was in that and so um, we got to work together and so it was a Really nice time, so I was like, "Yeah, absolutely, let's let's do this." So, so, what should our audience expect in the way of of musicians and 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 musical instruments on on the on the stage on Sunday? Well, you're your yeah. pianist, and what else is? Uh, so, this is a great concert. We have three accompanists involved. We have um, Chad, forgive Conlon. me, Conley, 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 yeah, and Holly. Conlon. Conlon. Conlon, excuse Conlon. me. We yeah. don't want to and get his name wrong. Conlon. Right, okay. exactly. <laughs> he's he's Sorry, watching. Sorry, Chad. Uh, and Holly, and and then and then myself, and then we also have a bass uh, player and a drum a drummer as well that's going to be coming with us. So a little yeah. rhythm section to accompany some of these numbers, which will yeah. be really this lovely. This is Holly Zaharia. Am I pronouncing it? Zahara. Zahara. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. And she's kind of the musical director, is that is it from what I understand? She and Tom are the music are directors. The music, okay. And Holly also sings. She has a beautiful soprano. Yeah. yeah. Uh, um, she's lovely. Yeah. Elto? Uh, she, Elto. Yeah, like, yeah. Yeah. A yeah. uh, lovely lady voice. Yeah. Lovely, yeah. lovely voice. And, and the Tom that you mentioned also is Tom Edmonds, Tom right? Tom Edmonds. And he, mm -hmm. was, he was featured with you as well as Kathy on the last, last show, year. right? So tell mm -hmm. us a little bit about Tom. Tom is a um, great big baritone, has a beautiful sound, big mm -hmm. sound, and um, I have a big sound. I'm more of a bass, and um, we just get along well together. We sound good together, I think, and uh, it's a big sound. You know, it's a big, busty, big <laughs> sound. <laughs> As only Captain Von Trapp could do, right? Or, 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 or Dad uh, Warbucks. Oh, we're much louder than much Captain louder. Von Trapp. Much louder than that. And so give us an idea. We're, we're talking about sort of Broadway hits, the American songbook, right? Yeah. So you two guys, come on, throw out some titles. Uh, what, 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 we're, what are we going to hear on, on this? Well, uh, one of my songs that I'm doing is Begin the Begin, which, is done, which was written by Cole Porter. And um, it's a long beautiful sort of rumba yeah. um, song, and um, that's Roger's, uh, no, that's Cole Porter. We're also doing Shall We Dance, which is uh, um, Richard Rogers and uh, Oscar Hammerstein from the K&I, and, I. and uh, Holly and I actually dance oh. in it. And it's, so we picked out these songs. Um, I asked Tom what, what he would like to sing. We were not um, like, you do this, you do that. Just what, what would you like to do? And Tom, to my right, is singing a beautiful song also. He's playing the piano, but he's being accompanied by Chad Conlon in uh, singing a piece from... Uh, Phantom of the Opera. Oh. I'm going to do a little music of the night. Oh, right. Yeah. yeah. Good yeah. for you. And, and Tom's voice is lovely because he has um, a more of a tenor voice. And um, it's... We would never get the same parts. <laughs> I, I, I don't like any other basses, but I love tenors. I love tenors. Yeah, the, the, the octaves or the, the uh, what, do, what do they call it, those? Uh, the, 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 uh, the range? Yeah, well, it would be like, you know, the fourth and fifth and sixth. You know? <laughs> anyway, now, now, Tom, tell us, uh, what, what is your uh, <coughs> musical background or training? Or when, 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 uh, when did you know that you wanted to do something like this uh, in your career? Oh, gosh. I love music ever since I was little. Yeah. Um, in elementary school, I would sit down at the piano and just start p figuring out what I was singing in school. I'd come home and try to figure out on the piano. And so that's how it all started. And then, you know, I just continued to sing in school. And then in high school, I was like, you know what? I think I'd love to like continue this. So I went into college for music and um, music ministries for more church related and then went on to grad school up here at Boston Conservatory for vocal performance and opera, oh, wow. which is what brought me to the 
Boston area and to the North Shore. So, yeah. Um, yeah. And then I fell in love with it up here and just stayed. So. Yeah. And you live up up in Rockport, right? Yeah. yeah. And that's where we have the Shaolin Performance Center. Yeah. Up there. yeah. That's a beautiful, beautiful. But have you performed there, John? Not yet. Not yet. Not oh, yet. Mm. Good answer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> good answer. Uh, now, um, this is, is this the third or fourth one of these shows that you've, you've uh, done here at, uh, at the Larkham? Yes, I think this is our fourth, I think. Yeah. And now, is there, is there any kind of a theme to, to the music, or, or are you just kind of kind of spread everything around and let people We just sing sort of spread things around. There's no, like, one theme to it. Um, again, we ask the singers if, what they would be interested in singing, what they like the best. Um, my sort of thesis was to have fun mm -hmm. and not have to learn anything new. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> you know, being the ripe old age, moi, you, I know a lot of songs, and I love to sing a lot of them. You know, some of them may be out of my range, but they can be brought down. The keys can be lowered, so maybe they were never intended for a bass voice, but sometimes it really works. Yeah. Um, I'm singing Be My Love, which was Mario Lanza's biggest number, mm -hmm. and, um, and he was a tenor. Yeah. So it's brought down into a bass, um, you know, an easy key for me to sing, and I think we're doing it in A flat. And... Um, We'll see, but I think yeah. it works. Mm -hmm. it's, it's it a, does work. It yeah. does work. Okay. But your Thank favorite, you. are, and now judging by, by your, your past, what you've done, your, your favorites are kind of like Broadway show tunes? Is that your favorite kind of, is that your No, like, my like actual Stripe favorite zone? music, like Tom, I went to uh, graduate school, never got a degree, but I went for six years to Langey at in their opera program. And I didn't need a degree. I didn't, and they kept saying, John, just to take a few more things. You've been <laughs> here long enough, you know, but I just wanted performance. Yeah. And I was at an opera company, it was called Opera Fest, for I think six years. Wow. And we did, you know, opera scenes, not full fledged operas, but opera scenes. And, um, you know, I loved it. I have a big, big opera voice. Yeah. Um, and in where, fact, was, where hmm? was the school? I'm sorry, where was the school? It's that called Langey School of Music. And it's where? Cambridge. Oh, in Cambridge. In Garden Street in Cambridge. Okay. Yeah, right and, in Harvard Square. And how old were you? Were you just out of college then? Or when, um, when was this well, time of your life? When I got out of college, I, I was drafted. So I was in the military for six years. I was mm. in the Coast Guard. Oh, yeah. I joined That's the, you're right. not drafted in the Coast Guard, but I joined the Coast Guard out of, I always say, out of logic. It would have been <laughs> illogical to have been in the Army. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So, and, and Tom, now what about, what about your choice? And I know you mentioned uh, liturgical music and you mentioned, mm. you know, the, 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 the higher skilled opera. So what is your kind of, you know, are you like a rockabilly Elvis Presley fan deep, deep down inside? Or oh, I really love all kinds of music. I think I found myself lately living in more of like the Broadway show tunes crossover into like folk or like I even like art songs. That's just really like, those are my areas that I love. I'm like American Songbook. I just love like the standards. Yeah. 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 Well, we just lost, uh, of course, uh, uh, just recently, we lost one of Canada's, probably the, the most famous songwriter, singer in Canada, Gordon Lightfoot, just uh, mm. last yeah. year or so. And uh, I mean, when you start looking back at the magnificent body of work that he did for he the did, last, yeah. and he was, he was still performing up until very shortly before. Well, a lot of singers, um, I remember my opera teacher, Phyllis Curtin, her name was, she was at BU, and um, she said, I remember I was young, you know, I'm out of college, but I was still very young, and she said, John, your best as a bass, your best singing voice will be in your 70s. Wow. And I'm like, what are you crazy? You know, I was 31 years old. Mm. I'm like, how so, could I? Will I live to be <laughs> so that? So you put your <laughs> career on the <laughs> but, but, but a bass voice, or as an alto in a woman, we mature later in life. I would, and in an opera, I would never, as a bass, be the pretty little boy that gets the pretty little girl. I'm not. I'm not. You would that be the character. father that was against the marriage. I was the count. <laughs> <laughs> I was the one that scared people. Mephistopheles, the devil, hmm. and um, they give those parts to basses because they're older, and that's their when they're singing their best when they're older. Yeah. Thus, a bass voice has a longer. 
um, singing career than a tenor, sorry to say that, but, yeah. or a soprano. Yeah. yeah. And uh, a perfect example of that was when Beverly Sills, the great late, unfortunately, Beverly Sills, left opera. She was at the height of her career, selling more tickets than anybody at the Met. And um, she called it off. She said, nope, I don't want to do it anymore. Yeah. And she, because she wasn't, she was still good, but she wasn't as good. And she wanted to leave at the top. up there. Yeah, she didn't want to. And um, so she did some concerts, but, uh, and she got into producing and um, hosting, and she did master a lot classes. of things. Master classes. Yeah, she master school, classes. Yeah. But, yeah. She, but she gave it up, because she knew that, and she was young, she yeah. wasn't old. Yeah, and, and you know, it, it, that, that's true uh, because a lot of people in, in the arts and, and sports take that extra see that extra jump, and, and they come crashing down. They and get hurt. You want to remember them at, at their prime, yeah. and, they, and, and then somehow you don't remember them as, as, as well yeah. if, if they try to just stretch it another year or whatever. There's a wonderful poem called To an Athlete Dying Young. Yeah. And it's just about that. At the height of this guy's career, yeah. he dies. Yeah. And he dies at the height of being, you know, the best. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a sad poem. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm lucky to still be singing, and I, I still want to sing. I have, I have so a great did your, love did, so for it. So you feel that your music teacher's uh, prophecy was fulfilled? Do you feel well, that, that? Yeah, that, I do. Uh, I, I was singing all along, but... Um, uh, I feel very strong and confident, and uh, singing each one of these numbers, it's a little play, it's a little story, mm. and I feel very um, honored yeah. to, um, in fact, the last thing Phyllis said to me, Phyllis Curtin, we were at Tanglewood, and she um, called me back after we said goodbye, and I knew she was in her 90s, I knew this was the last time I'd see her, and she called me back, and she says, John, John. Always remember, it's a privilege to sing. Mm. And wonderful. I've always thought that. That's a I'm wonderful so, sentiment. Yeah, wonderful. that I have that last moment, and I turned and wonderful walked sentiment. into the yeah, yeah. mist. Now, mm. Tom, you, now, you, you are a, a, a music arranger and composer as well. And now, do you, do you play in a band, or are you like a gun for hire where you do things like this and... And you're like the, the the piano part of some big production. What, what tell us about yeah, that? Yeah, I, I I'm more of the latter there. Yeah. I just basically play wherever and whatever the situation calls for. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not been involved with any kind of band or organization. I just kind of yeah. Yeah. And now, how did you two guys hook up? What, what, well, I I actually heard of you. We actually met. Um, I I forget when we met. At my house, I apparently. Yes, yeah. yeah. Okay. I, I don't remember, have no recall yeah. of that. Um, but I heard of you as a good music guy, I should know, in MLT, and we were sort of spotty until the summer. Yeah. And that's when we really um, met Matt. Yeah. And uh, worked together. And, um, yeah. you know, he, uh, he's a wonderful pianist and a wonderful, a lot of pianists are good pianists, but they don't accompany you very well. And um, it's and I I know that because I have had some of the worst that you know you're following <laughs> them the whole way along and they're yeah. supposed to be following you yeah. <laughs> or you know a nice relationship going on there but um, I've had people that I I just I'm like what am I doing here you know? <laughs> now you John you said that uh, uh, that because you're singing uh, or the, the 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 performers are singing a lot of the songs that they know and love yeah so that probably has cut down rehearsal time a little bit yeah, hasn't yeah we haven't had a lot. Yeah, we're performing Sunday. I'm going to see Tom tonight. We yeah. have a rehearsal tonight, and then yeah. I don't see you to the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, but professionals don't rehearse a lot. Yeah. They really don't. Um, Phyllis used to tell great stories in class about how she would, you know, they were, she was a star in at in New York, and they would just fly them in, and they'd go up right up and do. They'd have no rehearsals. Mm. You know, they might have a little bit of blocking just to see the stage, but um, sometimes they, they just didn't have rehearsal. They were pros. They've yeah, already, yeah. They know the roles. Well, yeah, and, and if you've done it so <coughs> many times, you, know, you just put yeah. the tape in the right spot. And yeah. <laughs> well, these song, all these songs we've known for a long time. And I, um, 
have no problem with a stand in front of us with the music there. Yeah. Now, some people really object to it, but I don't. There's, you know, we're each singing a bunch of songs, so, if, and as we get older, memorization is harder and harder. So it doesn't mo bother me at all that there's a stand in front of us. Yeah. A few of these songs we know, you know, yeah. backwards, forwards, so we're not using any stand. There's some blocking for that. But there's very little blocking. It's, it's more of a concerty type. You know, yeah. yeah. Now yeah. you told me uh, earlier. Am I correct? You told me there'd be some uh, World War II songs that you have well, chosen. Well, it's Tell Veterans Day on Saturday. Uh huh. In fact, I'm singing the Star Spangled Banner at Wenham at 11 o'clock at right in the middle of um, Wenham Center, and so um, to sort of honor the veterans and honor that day, which is the day before, we're going to sing. Um, Two uh, two songs. Holly singing "I'll Be Seeing You," and she sings that mm -hmm. beautifully. She's great, mm -hmm. she's great. It's if you come into just one thing, it's worth coming to. So that's just to hear her sing, "I'll be seeing you in all of those." From it's it's, but it's that it was the second most sung song during World War II. Do you know what number one was? God oh, bless the, America. Oh wow! Yeah, Kate Smith. Wow. And um, and then we're going into America the Beautiful, and that's how we end the show. Yeah. Um, and we uh, all we all sing it, all four of us. Yeah. Now, are you are you all on the stage the whole time, the or do you go time. off? And, yeah. And, we have uh, okay. We have a very simple set. It consists of four stools. Yeah. And four music stands. Yeah, it's kind of like and, it was the, la the and last. And that's it. Yeah. Last yeah. We don't have any props or yeah. anything. You know. No costumes. So you got, you got your your. Your bow tie, we have your, our, your, yeah, we have, I think you're just wearing the tux the whole time. Yeah, yeah we're not, <laughs> I mean, it's not, it's, I've been in shows that they talk more about the blocking and the costumes and, you know, I'm like, I can't deal with that. Mm. <laughs> it's just too, that's too much. Yeah, so uh, this, the, the show is uh, uh, Sunday. Sunday at three o'clock. At three o'clock at the Larcom. And, uh, uh, and also, let me throw this out, Donnie yeah. Crowell, Mm -hmm. who owns the theater yeah. with his wife, yeah. beautiful Lisa, and um, he's singing a song. Oh, I didn't know he was a singer. Well, he didn't know he <laughs> 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 He was until recently. Oh, and um, he runs the singing program at the theater with this wonderful uh, teacher, uh, coach, that can wow. pull Bethany on. Vaughn. Yeah. yeah, they can really pull a lot out of the guy on the street wow. making so everybody. I I, I I don't know. Do you know her? I do. She's lovely. And what, She's what's a, her name? Bethany Vaughn. Yep. B a u g h n. Yeah, she has a, a great a reputation, and she can teach yeah. almost anyone to not just to sing, but to sing well. Yeah. And he was there, and he uh, watched it because it's at his theater. So she said, "Come up, come up," and he said. So he taught her, and he's been going now as a student there. Yeah. I mean, he owns the place. Yeah. But um, and uh, he, we've heard him, and he's, he's he was here yesterday. Yeah. And she and teaches a class there. And right? She teaches a class there on okay. the stage of a vocal performance. Ah. A lot of people have a uh, secret, hidden desire to be, you know. Oh yeah, because they sing in the shower and yeah. stuff yeah, and like that. Yeah, and they want to sing, and a lot of them, just with a little bit of encouragement and some coaching, you'd be surprised what you can get out of people. Well, the biggest thing that I've always heard, and I've, I've always had, is stage fright, yeah. okay? So have you ever had stage fright? Do you get stage fright? No. No, you don't? I, I think because I've been on performing since I was little, yeah. really little, and I think that you get over that. Not that I'm not nervous and like, oh God, what am I doing this yeah. for, you know? And I do question, but it, what pulls you through are all these little vignettes, these little stories that tell great life, yeah. enhancing, you know, tragic, beautiful, lovely, yeah. loving yeah. stories. And I, again, I, it's a privilege to be in, in any one of these songs that we're doing is, um, is spectacular. So yeah. if you're only just doing one song, it would be worth the whole show. <laughs> well, that, that's a great, great sentiment, John. Yeah. And on that, uh, I think our time is just about up, but I want to remind our viewers, my guest has been John Archer and Tom Smoker, and they are going to be starring part of the, uh, the um, uh, musical ensemble for this Sunday at three o'clock at the Larcom Theater called 
Broadway comes to the Larcom, and tickets are, are still available. Mm -hmm. And gentlemen, thank you very much. It's been a pleasure talking with you. Well, thank, thank you. you all. Yeah. Thank you. And I'd like to remind our viewers that you've been watching North Shore Journal. I'm your host, Walt Kosmowski, and we'll see you next time.